All right, kids, today we're taking a look at a system made up of two blocks, which are connected by a string that runs up over a series of pulleys. Now, one of these pulleys is attached to a fixed surface up here, like a ceiling, uh, but the other pulley is attached to this moving block, which means as the block moves up and down, the pulley is going to move with it. Now, what I want to do in this problem today is show you how to solve for the ratio of these two masses so that the system will hang in equilibrium. And I also want to derive an expression for you so that you can solve for the acceleration of each of these blocks when they aren't in equilibrium. Now, the nice part of this problem is that this entire problem can be solved using just two equations. The first being Newton's second law, that is F equals ma. And the second being the force by gravity equals the mass of an object times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, there are a few assumptions that we're going to have to make in this problem. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that both the string and the pulleys are massless and frictionless. And ultimately what that means is that we're going to be able to treat the string as though the tension in the string is the same at all points. And you'll see why that's important later on. So starting with keeping these blocks in equilibrium. Before we dive into Newton's second law, there's a key concept that we have to understand here. And that is that the string acts upward once on this mass m1, but twice over here on this mass m2. You see the string actually attaches or touches the pulley at two different points here, one on each side. And that means any tension in the string is going to be acting twice upward on this pulley. Now to solve this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to create a system of equations by looking at each individual block. And then we're going to combine those equations to generate a solution. So looking first at this block M1 right here. The first thing we're going to do here is establish a positive direction. And that is we're going to say the downward direction is positive. Now looking at the forces which are acting on this block, we've got the tension in the string acting upward and gravity acting downward. So going over here to Newton's second law, that means we're going to have M1G acting downward in the positive direction minus T, which is acting upward. Now, because we want this block to remain in equilibrium, we want its acceleration to be zero. So we're going to say this value ma is zero. Now, for reasons that might not be totally clear yet, I'm going to rearrange this equation for t right here. And we're just going to leave that. And we'll relate that equation to the tension on this other block later. Now, turning to the second block here, we're again going to be applying Newton's second law. But we have to be careful with the positive direction here. You see, the downward motion of this block here correlates to the upward motion of the second block. So if we say downward is the positive direction for M1, that means upward is going to be the positive direction for M2. And so looking at the free body diagram for this block, what we have is the tension acting twice on this mass M2 over here, and, and then we have gravity acting downward in the negative direction. So going to Newton's second law, we're going to set the sum of all forces, that is 2t upward minus m2g downward, equal to zero. Again, we want this block to remain in equilibrium. Now, just like we did up here, we're going to rearrange this equation for t, or in this case 2t, uh, leaving us with 2t equals m2g. So really what we have here now is just a system of equations, uh, and we really don't care how large the, the tension force is. What we're going to do is we're going to sub one equation into the other in order to solve for a ratio of masses. And what we get is 2m1 equals m2. Or that is to say that m2 has to be twice as heavy as m1 in order for the system to sit in equilibrium. Now moving on to the second part of this problem, I want to derive an expression for the acceleration of these two blocks when they're not in equilibrium. And again, there's a key idea that we have to wrap our heads around here. You see, if this block right here was to move down, let's say, some distance, how about one meter? This portion of the string over here is going to have to get one meter longer. And that string's got to come from somewhere. In fact, it's going to have to come from over here. But in order to take one meter of string out of these two strands over here, each strand's going to have to get a half a meter shorter because they have to change length equally. And so what that means is that if this block moves down one meter, this block over here is going to move up only a half a meter. Or you could say M1 is going to move twice as far as M2. Now, by a bit of extension, that means M1 is always going to be going twice as fast as M2. Or, what's important for us, M1 is always going to accelerate at twice the rate as M2. 
Now in this problem, we're not going to change anything about our free body diagrams or the positive directions that we established in the first part of this problem. And we're again going to generate a system of equations. So starting here again with M1, uh, we're going up to Newton's second law. And things are going to look pretty familiar. We've got M1g minus t. But because this block is going to accelerate, we're going to set that net force on M1 equal to M1a. And I want to be really specific about this. We're talking about A, the acceleration of block 1. So I'm going to actually call that A1. Remember, these two blocks accelerate at different rates. So we need to be specific about which acceleration we're talking about. This is A1 because, of course, we're dealing with block 1. Now, again, I'm going to rearrange this for T, and we're going to use this equation later in a system of equations. Turning to mass 2, we again have Newton's second law. And again, we have the tension acting twice upward on this block and gravity acting downward. Now, because this block is accelerating, we're going to say that net force is equal to M2, A2. And again, be careful. A2 is not the same as A1. I know I keep bringing this up, but that's the central issue that creates problems for people in this type of question. Now, you'll notice we have two equations, just like we did in the first part of this problem. But now we have three unknowns. We have tension as well as both of the accelerations. So we're going to need a third equation. And that third equation comes from the driving concept that's governing what's going on here. That is that our two accelerations are not the same. In fact, A1 is going to be double or two times A2. So we're just going to represent that as a function here. And so what we have now are three equations and three unknowns. So moving this over here, so we've got some room for activities. We're going to take equation 1 and sub it into equation 2 here. And then we'll rearrange that to get all our A's on one side. And you'll notice we still have an A2 and an A1. So what we're going to need to do is take this third equation and sub it in here. And that's going to allow us to solve for A2. This is the acceleration of block two as a function of our two masses as well as gravity. Now again, taking and applying this third equation to our acceleration for A2, we can come up with an expression for A1. So what we have here now is a system of equations that we can use to solve for the acceleration of each of these blocks as a function of the given masses. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.